All right, we're going to say shalom to everyone. Thank the Most High for the approaching Sabbath. Um, we're going to get into a quick video. I say quick, but I'm going to see if I can make it quick. Um, if you want more information on this particular title or lesson, uh, you know, I will go into, uh, I will actually post the video that I did a while back uh, in regards to the covering for the woman. I go into great detail uh, in regards to how it's written in the law, and some people are over looking what's written when it talks about the covering all right even when you know when we would build certain things tabernacles and things of that nature there were certain coverings based on the sacrifice so people don't really go into the details because they're not they don't really want to do it and uh so it's written in the law to actually for a woman to cover her head all right um like i said i'll post the video uh on this in the description box but what I want to do is because there was a comment made in regards to that video and I thought I would kind of revise some of the information uh, saying that the husband is the is the head and the, the woman is covered by her husband so she don't have to literally put a covering on her head and I'll show you how that conflict that type of interpretation conflict with the scriptures remember that the Most High is not the author of confusion okay now let's go to First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. And what I want to um, want to uh, say, if you can't hear me, uh, Salaki, or I apologize, pardon me. Um, so you may want to use headphones uh, in this particular feed. All right, First Corinthians eleven, verse one, and it says, "Be ye followers of me." So Paul is stating right here, and I'm going to analyze this, you know, because you have to do that when it comes down to Paul's writing. He was talking to the church in Corinth. He was going to the elders. Because there was some feuds going on and certain disputations and things of that nature. All right, the church in Corinth, Paul was saying, even as I also am of Christ. So Paul was stating, claim he is a follower of Christ. So follow me. All right. Now I praise you, brother. So he's giving his brother respect and praise that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I deliver them to you. So of course he's talking when it's his brother and it's talking to the brothers of the church the elders, the deacons, things of that nature. Okay? Now, I want to say this very clear. This is not a bash on women, but there is an order of how things are supposed to go. Okay? Verse 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So we understand that through Christ, we are under him, which is the man, is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. There's an issue with sisters uh, and, you know, other, the other Gentile nations and things of nature that want to follow the Bible. They have an issue with this. Not all. And I want to respect, pay respects to the sisters that understand the scriptures and and are in humility when it comes down to the, to the scriptures in regard to the couple. And it says, in the head of Christ is the most high. So we see the order, and verse 2 states very clear on what Paul is saying. I'm going to go back to verse 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the order, because that's what ordinance means, as I deliver them to you. He's delivering you this order of how the congregation or how we as people are supposed to worship the Most High, all right? All right, so let's jump to go and let's go to verse four. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Now, that should be smack in the face about the woman. Don't have to have her head covered physically because she's married to, you know, she has a husband. And I'll show you why I say that. Verse five, but every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered. But hold up, you, there's something, there's an issue. You are married, so you don't have to have an, a, a physical covering. So that means very clearly, verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered. So if it's talking about a, your, your husband is your, is your head, then how can you go into this scripture right here? If you see the clash, it's not going to make sense with that analogy or that interpretation but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head so that means you should only pray when you're married no 
This is not talking about your husband is the is your covering of your head of your physical head. You respect your husband keeping your physical head covered because he's respecting Christ, which is his head, which is uncovered. You have male and female. The female has a certain order that she needs to be under through Christ, and the male has a certain order that he needs to be under through Christ. That's the reason why one have to do different than the other, which is opposite attracts. That's just the way it go. The moon, she has an order in her cycle. The sun has his order and cycle. Okay? Verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaped. So it's actually talking about a physical cover. So it's it's, it's just, you, you know, you don't suppose to, a, a woman don't suppose to go around walking around like, you know, looking like uh, Steve Harvey or, you know, some bald head guy. You know what I'm saying? Like me. It's just, nah, that's of a man. All right. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. Okay. So if you're not covered physically, let her also be shown. But it says very clear. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown, which it is. Or shaving, let her be covered. When it says shown, it's a difference between shaving and showing, of course. Showing is a real short haircut like this. Shaving is bald as I'm going in the middle. That's shaving. Okay? That's a shame for a woman to, to take the resemblance of a man. Alright? Verse 7 4. A man indeed ought not to cover his head. Right? So if it's just talking about male and female, married and unmarried. Then there's a problem right here. For as much as he is the image and glory of God, he is the image he was created first. It's just that respect. All right. He was created first, and the first woman was created from the man's rib. That's why you are, that's why women are called womb. Womb man. Okay. But the woman is the glory of the man. That's where her hair comes in. That's why the Most High made her so beautiful. With her hair and things of that nature. Our sisters years ago. Their hair would grow all the way down. Past their, their calf muscle. To hide their secret parts. That's how long the sisters hair used to grow back then. So you're talking about. That is the glory. Of the man. And that's her glory. To be attractive. To be attractive. To set off pheromones or whatever. For the, for the man. And that's what it's for. Even women do that today for her glory. She sees somebody she likes. She flaunts herself and, and tosses her head. She wants that attention. She wants you to recognize her. That's why she flaunts and tosses. So back when you're in the church, you keep, you're under the humility of the congregation and the elders and pastors and things of that nature. You're talking about men. If you read through scriptures, you'll understand the scripture. You're talking about men eyes will drift because of a beautiful woman. And I'll show you how powerful the woman is too, based even on the angel. Alright? Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So the Most High made the woman to be very attractive for the man, so he can reproduce. Okay? Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. But the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman for the man. So the woman was created for the man. Uh, a help me. Um, someone to be uh, side by side with him. Okay. Not to come against him. But to be by, side by side with him. In the times of trouble. Alright verse 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power. On her head because of the angels. You see how that's very deep. That's very deep. And I had to highlight it so I will be able to emphasize on this very deep. That's what happened to the angels in Genesis 6. When you read in the when you read in Genesis 6 when the angels was enticed by the by the women because they're beautiful hair, things of that nature. They fell because of a woman. 
You're talking about angel. You're very powerful. Women don't understand that. Right? For this cause ought the woman to have power. You see that? On her head. On her head. It's talking about your glory of your hair. And I'll show you. Because of the angel. Verse 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. So both the Most High made man and woman, and they supposed we're supposed to show glory to the to the Most High. Verse twelve: For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of the Most High. Judge in yourself. So this is common sense. This was it. Judge in yourself. Okay, common sense. That's what it's saying. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Now. It is actually talking about her her hair uncovered. Her hair without a covering. That's what it means. Okay? Verse 14. Doeth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? So if a man got long hair, see it's talking about the physical right here. All this is pertaining to the physical being, which represents the spiritual being under humility. So whatever you do in the, in the in the physical for the most high, you're doing it based on the spiritual aspect. Verse 15, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Why is it a glory to her? And I'm going to show you. Let's go to back. Let's go back to verse. Give me a minute here. Verse 7 and whole verse 15. I'm going to go back. Verse 7 says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. The glory of the man. Why? Let's go to verse 15 to make it clear. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Not to the most high. It was never the glory to the most high, but to the man. That's why you have to have your head covered. And I hope that makes sense. Because people say, well, that's her glory. That's her glory. And then they, they use this scripture, verse 15. I'm going to read it again in totality. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is giving her for a covering. It says her, her for her covering. You are boasting in yourself, if you would say, if that's the interpretation that some people are getting. No, this is the glory for you for a covering. Of course, it's common sense for your head. It's covering your freaking skull. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. So that's your glory. But when you're in the church praying and prophesying, you pose and give all glory to the Most High. And I'll show you the scripture. All right. Long hair. It is glory to her, for her hair is giving her for a covering. It didn't say the husband. Because people say, well, God is, you know, I'm, a, you know, my husband is my covering. But this scripture don't say that. So your interpretation is all based on not understanding in context of how Paul writes. Right, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, not to God, not to your husband, but to her. Even though, of course, we read it speaks about the you being, you know, the glory is for the man. But once you're married, you know, everything comes together as one. For her hair is given her for a covenant. But if any man seem to be counteous we have no such custom neither the churches of the most high now in this that i declare unto you i praise you not that you come together not for the better but for the worse why because you have to come we are all in sin so you come together because you're not better all right so i wanted to under i want people to understand what the glory of the most high of, of the woman's head is her covering that's her covering to be glorious for to be to entice okay and i'll show you what, what i mean here let's go to um some definition let's go to a definition for the word glory all right glory in a regular world dictionary which links it give you the same pretty much the same type of definition in the comport but i know i have a secular following as well so i like to go into the regular dictionary to pull those that deal with the world out of it into scripture. All right. Glory. 
very great praise, honor, or distinction. So when you're in the church, or if you're praying and prophesying, why are you getting the glory? Cover your head. If you're in a setting of studies and things of that nature, you're going into the scriptures. Cover your head. If you're beautiful, cover that. We don't need to see that. Man don't need to see all that at that particular time. That's just the way it goes. Like I say, women don't know their beauty, their, their power of their beauty. Let me read it again so to be very clear. Because we're talking about people that's... We're talking about angels that are enticed by, by women. Verse 10. For this cause... And that's why I want to go back. Let me go verse, let me make it clear. Verse 9. I'm going to go back to verse 9. 1 Corinthians 11 and 9. And it says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. What it's saying is, and the old quick as English is, now, since certain things happen, cover that when you're in Scripture. Cover your head. Because because of the angels. That's why it says, ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. That's power. I'm talking about your physical hair. <laughs> okay? Glory. Very great praise, honor, or distinction bestowed by common consent. Renown to win glory on the field of battle. So different definitions. Okay? The, what we understand is an honor. So, at this particular time, yes, we're going to praise the woman. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'll show you the scriptures and Proverbs about that. But based on the premise of this and in regards to a woman, she needs to have her hair covered. Okay? That's just the order. The man, we, you know, we, we have to get straight frequency. A lot of people don't understand the, the message behind, well, why a man need to have his head uncovered. Because he has to get straight frequency from the most high. Okay? If an antenna is covered, it's pretty it's not gonna work too much. If you have an antenna and it's covered in a tunnel, it's not gonna get too much frequency, it's not gonna get too much reception. That's just the way it is. You're talking about your golden bowl. This needs to be cut uncovered to get straight frequency from the most high. Because the man is the head. There's a level, of course, that the woman get get straight frequency from the most high too. But she had to be in the order. She had to be under straight humility and under a pastor, a preacher, an elder, things of that nature. If she's not married, if you're in the church, she needs to be covered. Okay? Now, let's go to uh, Proverbs. And I said a big thing. You can praise a woman. You can give her respect and glory. But there's a time and frame for that, and she has to be a certain way. And I'm about to read it. All right, let's go to Proverbs 31, verse 30. Remember I said that, that the woman's hair is her glory. I didn't say what the scripture said. All right, I'm going to read it again. Like I said, I want this to be very clear. All right, let's go to verse 5, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of God, and the image and glory of the Most High, but the woman is the glory of the man. The difference, you got two different, you know, species or whatever. Now, I don't know if that's the right term, but you have, she has her duties and man got his duty. The, mo the man is the in the image of the, of the Most High. The woman is, the, is for the man and he is enticed by her. That's just the way it goes. I didn't write this, so if any sisters hit me up or any women hit me up on this, I'm not teaching to try to bash or none of that. That's just the order. You'll be fighting the most high, not me. All right, now, the reason why I wanted to go back to that scripture is because of this. Let's go to Proverbs 31, verse 30. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Beauty, beauty is vain. Okay? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So if she respect the Most High and be under subjection as the order is set up when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, she shall be praised. All right, Proverbs 31 verse 30. And I guess what people are doing is when they read certain scriptures, you know what I'm saying, they have a boastful type of, you know, they, they, they're entertaining some type of boastful, proud spirit unaware. 
if you get a certain interpretation, you don't want to follow, you know, the, the scriptures and be 100% hum under humility, then there's an issue on a personal, on a personal issue. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 27, and it says, it is not good to eat much honey. So you get too much sweetness, it's not good, all right? So for men to search their own glory is not glory. So there's a certain way you do things. A, a woman that look good, fine. A man that look handsome, whatever, that's fine. But if you're calm, if you always into yourself, you know, dealing with you and you, that ain't no glory. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. But that's what that scripture is saying. All right? Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 9, I mean, excuse me, Psalms 19, verse 1. And we're going to find out who's supposed to get all the glory. That's why I wanted to go to that scripture over and over, 1 Corinthians 11. In regard to that, who, if the woman's glory is her, is her head, is her head, for her covering, for what she needs, her duties, that's her thing, okay? Psalms 19, verse 1, the heaven declare the glory of the Most High, the glory of the Most High, and the firmament showeth his handwork. So we see the stars of heaven and the sun and things and that the firmament, the, the blue sky. He gets that glory. So when people say Mother Earth and this and not giving the glory to the Most High, there's an issue. There's, a, there's an issue. There's a spirit involved there. All right. The heaven declare the glory of God. Even the heavens declare the glory. So what's wrong with his creation that, that, that's in his image? Man is in, is in his image. Because see, what happens is a lot of people... Uh, don't a lot of women don't know maybe that they're starting to follow that little doctrine and things that little wasn't no if you wanted to go into that folklore or things of that nature that that entity she wasn't no ugly woman okay Adam Eve was very beautiful but you start to go off in that little thing praising yourself as an entity all right I mean there's a thing now that even brothers are getting into and sisters both are getting into this thing of doing selfies and things. They say it's some type of addiction. They say people that takes a lot of selfie pics have a certain uh, what the thing is called narcissist or some type of uh, certain type of uh, mental illness. That's a Satan because you're dealing with just looking at yourself you know what I'm saying always in the mirror and putting them wherever you go at you want to train and you flaunting it flat. There's an issue with that. There's a, that's what Lucifer used to do. He was very vain. Alright let's go to Psalms 21 verse 5. His, his glory, his, his, the most high glory is great in thy salvation. All right? This is prophet. This is uh, David singing about Christ. Honor and majesty has thou laid upon him. Honor and majesty have thou laid upon him. He's talking about Christ. So Christ is even written. This is what the, the apostles and the disciples would use in the New Testament, you read the Episcopals, but you would they would go before they were before that was written, they was using the Torah and the Tanakh to spread the gospel to the people. All right, let's go to Psalms 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The King of glory, Christ was the King of the Jews. Right? So we understand it's talking about Christ. Alright, let's go to Isaiah 3, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 3 and 8. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen. So we understand that the tribe of Judah has fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Most High, to provoke the eyes of His glory. They're provoking the Most High anger, to the anger of His glory. They had taken the way we wanted to do our own thing, glorify in our own selfish ways, dealing with uh, Moloch and Baal and Balaam and all these different gods, even, uh, you know, certain times when our people would fall. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. What I want to show here in these particular excerpts of scriptures is to understand what, how we supposed to glorify the most high. So when you see, and I'm going to go back to Jeremiah 9 and verse 23. 
So when you see in um, verse 15, First Corinthians chapter 11, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. That's just her thing. All right? For her hair is giving her for a covering. Not the husband, because that's what they, that's what people are saying. Well, the husband is the is the covering of the woman, not her actual head. See, if you go into that mindset that you believe that you can do whatever you want to your head, you can cut it off and look like a man and all that, and you know, just doing certain things to your head. You want to go into church looking all flaunting your head and doing all this, and you know what y'all do. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? But you can't do that. You gotta be under humility. You know, just keep. You're in the church, or if you're in a congregational setting, or forsake not the assembly, of course, if you're in a assembly of people, you're in a Bible study, or whatever, even if you're on Skype or whatever, whatever you're doing, even if you're by yourself, you're in, if you're in the Bible, cover the thing up. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It looks, it looks beautiful anyway, so. Your eyes are deceiving. Some people say, I don't like the cover. I Alright, give me a minute here. Jeremiah 9, verse 23. Jeremiah 9 and 23. Thus saith the Most High, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So a man should not even glory in his own wisdom. So it ain't just about the sisters or women. It's actually it, all of us. Okay? The, all the glory goes to the Most High. Thus saith the Most High, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Right? Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Verse 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that the that they he understandeth and knoweth me. He's talking about the Most High. That I am the, the Lord which exercise love giving kindness, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For the, these things I delight, saith the Most High. He delight in those things that is of Christ as his son. That's what Christ came for in the New Testament to show us how the Most High wanted the, wanted things to go anyway. All right. Romans 15, verse 7. Romans 15, verse 7. And it says, Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God or the Most High. Wherefore, receive ye one another. So we're supposed to receive each other. Be very be peaceful and respectful to each other. As Christ also received us to the glory of the Most High. Alright? Let's go to uh, Romans 15, verse... Excuse me, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 31. That according as it is written, and I'm going to show you where this is written to show you the the scripture that goes with that, the precept, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Most High. Where is this written in the Old Testament? All right, let's go to Psalms 34, verse 2. Psalms 34, verse 2. My soul shall make her boast. So it's, you're supposed to boast in the Most High. In the Lord. That's why it says, My soul shall make her boast in the Most High. The humble shall hear, therefore, and be glad. When you see the word boast in regards to boasting in the Most High, it is talking about Christ. And it is talking about how we supposed to boast in Christ. Let me get that scripture that just came to mind. Now. Give me a minute here. So, as we understand, hopefully, this is making sense. Uh, for those of you that had some type of mix-up in regards to the covering and what glorify mean things in nature, it's actually talking about glorifying the Most High and not yourself. You, you have long hair because the Most High gave it to you, so you can, so the man can be attracted to. You. That's basically what verse. I'm going to read it again. I want this to be very clear. 1 Corinthians 11. All right. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. There you go. 
he's looking at you with your beautiful hair. Wow. So that's that and let me tell you, that's what women very fight a lot when their hair be thinning out on the sides and you know, they and other nations cater to our people, especially when we talk about the daughters of Zion and the children of Israel. They put stuff in our foods and, you know, vaccinations and all that. The most high actually prophesied on the daughters of Zion having issues with their hair being long now. That they feel they get depressed and they feel heavy in spirits, vexed because of their hair breaking off and, you know, it's kinking up, drying off and splitting in a certain length. That's a curse. All right. And they know. All right. Give me a minute. All right, let's go to First Corinthians, excuse me, Second Corinthians 11, verse 10. Second Corinthians 11 and 10. And it says, as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Akshia. So we understand that every place Paul was going, he was going everywhere. Uh, dealing with boasting in these, he was boasting everywhere about Christ. That's glorifying the Most High. Every time you see boast. In regards to when it's talking about the Most High, that's glory, right? So hopefully you all enjoyed. Um, I'm getting ready for some very good classes coming up next week. Uh, starting, I believe, the Sabbath, the Shabbat, the 25th. Uh, all right, I posted it on Google. I'll post the information again. Uh, in regards to that, it's going to be live on YouTube. Uh, you know, there's no actual charge involved um if someone wants to give a gift or whatever uh that's okay but it's not something that's mandatory or would keep you from getting the live feed all right so there you had it um of course you know it takes a while to you know put up lessons and things of nature it's a lot of work uh so that's why i understand why uh, you know some brothers and sisters or some brothers that actually you know do you know, have a fee, and it's nothing, that's just the reason why they do it. It's a lot of work involved. Um, so, but there you have it. Um, I'll be making more videos. Um, this is my life, and I'll be doing this for the rest of it. Shalom.